from prejudice, privilege, and marginalization, move into a completely new area. And that is the area of attraction and love. And so Robert Sternberg proposed this triadic theory. He's really into his triadic theories. He has one of his intelligence too. But this is his triadic theory of love. And he believed there was really three types of love that you could combine to make four additional types of love. And so here in the purple circle, this is what he called intimacy or liking an individual. And so one part of love is actually thinking positive about them and liking them. The orangish red circle here is this is passion. So this is uh, wanting to hug and kiss and become sexually intimate with a person. And then the blue is commitment. So this is, you know, if you feel like you want to be there with them and you're loyal to them. And he believed that based on how these combined, we might have different types of love. For instance, let's say that you have just the commitment, but you don't like the person and you're not really passionate about them anymore. Well, that's going to feel more like an empty love or an empty marriage. It might be someone who stays in the marriage, even though they don't really want to be there. If you have someone that it likes of another person, but is not passionate and not committed, well, that's just like it. You're not actually getting involved and you're not committed to them. And someone who is just passionate about them, but doesn't really like them on an emotional level and isn't really committed to them, that's just infatuation. That's not true love. And then we can look at some combinations. If you combine the purple and the blue, that is someone who likes an individual and is committed to them, but they're not really sexually attracted to them, the passion's gone. That could be companionate love. You might see that as people grow old together, maybe the passion dies down, but they still are really loyal to each other and they like each other, so they're companions. If we combine just the purple and just the red, well, this is a person who likes and they're passionate, but they're not so committed. So this is gonna be that really romantic, uh, fiery love, but it might be off and on again, off again, and they're not so committed. And if we see someone who is passionate and sexually involved and they're committed, but they actually don't like each other, that might be some sort of friends with benefits or some sort of committed casual relationship. He called it fatuitous and that can be translated into sort of silly or illogical sort of love. And then of course, if you combine all three, then you're gonna have really what he called consummate love or true love. And this is going to be more that full picture of love. Now in terms of how we go about picking our mates, there's been lots of different theories. There's been the complementary needs theory. And this is the idea that opposites attract. This is the idea that a really neurotic person might really like a really emotionally stable person or a really extroverted person might like a really introverted person or a messy person might like a neat person. However, that theory, although super interesting, doesn't actually play out. It's not that empirically supported. In fact, what is more empirically supported is the attraction similarity theory. And this is the idea we like homophily. Again, we like things that are the same. And so two extroverts will get along, two neurotic people will get along, and that seems to help us reinforce and support ourselves. And that the couples that stay together the longest tend to become more similar in their personality over time, and the couples that stay together actually tend to look alike. And that's because of assortative mating. Assortative mating is the idea that it's outside of ethnicity, outside of ethnicity and culture, if that was controlled for, we tend to prefer people that are of the same roughly height and weight for gender. So a medium height man and a medium height woman or two medium height men tend to be more attracted to each other. And we tend to be more attracted to people who have similar nose widths, nose lengths, earlobe sizes, cheekbone structure, chin shape as ourselves. So two people with more short rounded faces with button noses might be more attracted to each other than people with longer faces with skinny noses or people with risen or sunken cheekbones or heart shaped jawline versus a round jawline or a square jawline might be more attracted to each other. And we have found this in same gender as well as other gender partnerships. And we have found this regardless of ethnicity. So even in interracial couples, interracial couples who stay together longer, although they have different phenotypic expressions because of their ethnic differences, they tend to stay together longer if they both have rounded faces or if their eyes are both roughly the same distance apart. And so this is really a type of narcissism if you think about it. We like people who look similar to us in a certain type of way. And those groups who look similar will stay together longer. All right, so speaking about staying together longer, what actually predicts us keeping our mates around? Well, there's two main psychological ideas and they are reciprocity and self-disclosure. So although you might be good at keeping a mate, 
what keeps the flames going is the idea that there's a give and a take that is not a one-sided partnership and if it is one-sided it might be due to somebody sick or somebody's unwell but as soon as they get over that there's other meaningful ways that's made up for and it's the idea that there's self-disclosure people feel vulnerable being open to the other person now not everybody is comfortable with the same level of self-disclosure but it's the idea that they have as much as they need so nobody is closed up or lying or keeping secrets from the other person and so the way we think about ourselves, the way we think about groups, and the way we think about our relationships is an area that social psychology loves to investigate. You've now reached the end of Unit 12. I hope you enjoyed this very messy and very controversial unit. Well done.